your energy forecast for Friday, May 17th. So the moon is going to continue to be in Virgo energy here all day. So again, lots going on in the mental plane. It is an earth sign that is ruled over by Mercury. So mind over matter or what takes place in our mind eventually becomes matter. So we have to be very careful about what we're putting time, energy and attention into. That Virgo moon also has us kind of focused on the issues, on the problems in order for us to fix, repair, and resolve them. It is a little bit finicky because we're focused on the smaller details of our mental plane, of our emotions, of our actions, of our plans. And so we may kind of miss the forest past the tree, so to speak, but we have to make sure that this one tree is super healthy in order for us to replicate it to actually create a healthy forest system, if that makes sense. So to have a great grand vision, that's one thing, but to break it down in small manageable pieces, that is the other. And that is what the Virgo energy has us focused on, is how all these smaller little pieces can connect and reveal the greater, grander goal, vision, and dream that, of course, we want to be building towards. There are 10 different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in this Virgo energy going to make a very positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. This means that we're focused on the healing more than we are on the wounds, which of course is always a positive, especially where this new identity is coming forth, where we're getting a little bit more comfortable and familiar operating in this new sense of self. We're starting to see the growth. We're starting to see new abilities. We're starting to see the, let's call it projection of this new version of Self, this new perspective, this new narrative, this new want, need, and desire out into the world. Mercury, though, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who rules over the Virgo energy that the moon is currently in. Mercury is fresh in this Taurus energy. Again, we just shifted into this Taurus energy here on the 15th. If you want to go ahead, take a listen to that Asha forecast to refresh your mind on what this particular energy is going to mean. Probably going to help you stay ahead of the game. Mercury is going to get in the boxing ring, square off, create tension and conflict with Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer. He is retrograde. So again, an inner journey, an inner reflection of the power struggles, of the power and control that our ego programming has over our physical bodies at this present moment, because the Aquarius energy is a new level of consciousness that we want to integrate. We want to do better. We want to improve. We want to bust out of and bust free of some of these mental restrictions, mental limitations. But of course, Mercury coming together with Pluto is going to put us in a very negative mind space. Why is that? Well, First of all, it's a square. It's supposed to create tension and conflict in order for us to have an aha moment and epiphany. This is essentially a breakdown in order for us to have a breakthrough, especially where our thoughts are concerned. Now, this means that there's going to be a lot of pressure in our headspace. Again, if you need to take a listen to this week's Ascension forecast to understand where the energy is actually manifesting in the physical form, please go ahead and do so. But this is an intensity in the mental plane, in our thoughts, in our narratives, and triggering some not so nice thoughts, some not so nice memories. We are overthinking things to a certain degree where nothing good is coming out of the realizations, the revelations that are popping off in this particular narrative. This particular interaction is here to kind of highlight for us where the egoic programming, again, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, are kind of preventing us from moving on. There is a limiting effect. There is a restricting effect. We're semi-paranoid. We're semi-obsessed with a certain looping thought, if you will. And this is essentially what it is that we have to override and overwrite in order for us to be in a more positive mind space in order for there to be a major change, a major transformation in our inner realm, starting with the way that we are seeing things, seeing our situation, seeing our circumstances from our higher self set of eyes versus the lower egoic programming set of eyes that, of course, is going to keep us in a state of paralysis. The moon then goes ahead and makes an interaction with Pluto because, of course, we, we realize in that square that this doesn't feel good. Don't like 
like feeling like this. Don't like thinking about these things. Really dark force energies taking over the mental plane. Well, we've identified a problem. The moon in Virgo, here to fix it. So this interaction with Pluto is kind of unpacking, if you will, the emotional disposition that is connected to that negative mind frame, that negative looping thought, those old, not so nice ideas, memories, flashbacks, whatever the case may be. The moon interacting with Pluto in this way, again, is attempting to fix, heal, resolve our inner realm issues. Because right now it's the inner realm that is preventing us from taking action and making moves out in the physical realm. And shortly thereafter, the moon goes ahead and interacts with Mercury. And of course, Mercury rules over this Virgo energy. Mercury's in Taurus energy. So this is Earth on Earth action. Earth on Earth means that we're trying to think very logically, very practically inside of the context of the physical realm. So that means that, you know, we're not thinking imaginatively. We're not tapping into creativity. We're just thinking matter of fact. And sometimes that is the problem. Sometimes when we allow our physical realms to dictate what is possible for us, we kind of feel trapped. We feel very limited and restricted and confined in this certain circumstance. Sometimes the answer is to think positive, is to think more mystically, is to have that creative and imaginative energy, putting us in a different mind space that helps us escape the heaviness and the weight of this present moment of the here and now. But the moon and Mercury, again, our heart space and our head space, they're trying to get on the same page. They're trying to examine the actual physical issues here in this physical realm, in our mental plane, in our emotions, and where it is that they are very limiting to what it is that we want to do, what we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to bring to life from here. The moon then goes ahead, directly opposes and sits across from Saturn. Okay, so Saturn the Lord of Karma, who rules over roles and responsibilities and systems, structures, foundations, willpower and discipline. Of course, Saturn is in Pisces energy. Pisces and Virgo energy sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. Both represent the axis of healing. Virgo energy attempts to heal the physical body and the mental plane, while the Pisces energy focuses on healing the emotional realm and our spiritual realm. Now, emotionally speaking, we're at odds with Mr. Saturn right now. Again, there is this undertone where we are having to boss up into new roles and responsibilities, new situations and circumstances, but we're lacking the willpower, belief system and discipline to actually make that move. Again, the moon in Virgo focusing in on the smaller details of the greater, grander picture here needs to sit in this tension point, needs to have this back and forth confrontation, if you will, in our inner realm of emotions and narratives and everything in between to realize where it is that, again, we are blocking ourselves. Yes, there is a little bit of a harsh reality check that comes in with Saturn's energy. There's a little bit of a pause button, a little bit of a restriction, if you will. But this restriction, this opposition, this conflict is putting us in a situation where we're realizing that our inner realm does not have the structure of confidence, of optimism, of feeling well-equipped and well-prepared at this present moment to do all of the big things that our higher self wants us to do. So obviously, this isn't going to feel good. It isn't supposed to. It is going to highlight for us what needs to change right down to the finer details of the way that we're waking up, what we're consuming our minds with, what we're pouring into, how it is that we're taking care of ourselves, the routines that we have, the inner dialogue that we have, the time that we're making for ourselves to balance out that mind-body-soul equation. That is where true discipline begins. And in order for us to be successful, we have to have really helpful, healthy habits, starting with our mental plane and emotion right from the get go. When we wake up, what it is that we're pushing ourselves to do, what it is that we're consuming our time, energy and attention with. Now we sit in that for about, I'm going to say five hours ish. And then we start moving into another awkward energy. And we probably aren't going to be able to really identify where one is ending and one is beginning because they, they kind of bleed in together. Now around noon ish, 
We have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire in this Aries energy and his rulership. He's got ants in his pants. He's growing very restless. Semi-squaring, which is a little bit of a tension and conflict point, not as major as a square because this is a half square, a semi-square with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Taurus energy. So again, Jupiter has been in this Taurus energy since May of 2023. And we only have a couple of weeks left in Taurus energy before we shift into Gemini energy. The process of changing, rearranging, redesigning, restructuring our physical realms, building into something new, something different, something happier, something stable has been a very low, slow, steady process. Almost so slow that it doesn't even look like we've been productive in doing anything, especially we're rearranging our physical realm is concerned. Jupiter usually brings us optimism and confidence, usually illuminates this dreaminess, this, I'm going to say, over-exaggerated ability to create options and opportunities for us out of essentially nothing. But here's the thing. Mars has a lot of pent up energy, pent up aggression. Again, he's growing very restless. He thought he was going to be making up for last time here in this Aries energy. We've been doing a lot more inner work than we have had opportunities to do in the physical realm. And Mars and Jupiter coming together in this way is definitely creating a situation where agitation and frustration of the lack of options and opportunities is definitely getting to us. We are kind of, I'm going to say, throwing a tantrum at this point. We're really defeated and disappointed in a lot of ways. And again, Aries energy being a fire sign and Taurus energy being an earth sign right now. There's more fire coming from Mars and Aries in his rulership that has the potential to burn down the options and opportunities that we were excited to actually grow into. Again, this is all an inner energy management type of thing. We have to understand that the dark force energies are coming at us right now because we're on the precipice of a major change, of a major growth spurt. And so now we're feeling defeated because, again, we're kind of nearing the ending degrees of this Taurus energy where Jupiter's at. So there's a crisis. There's a pressure. There's an overwhelming state of I have to get my shit together. I have to make a change. I have to transform. But we don't necessarily know what into. We don't know how to. We don't even know where to begin. That frustration, that agitation is coming from Mars being in his rulership wanting to really make up for lost time. So adding fuel to the fire here, the moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. So a negative interaction means that we're focused more on the wounds than we are on the ability to heal them. And so we're getting pretty down on ourselves. We're judging ourselves. We are criticizing ourselves. We're putting pressure on ourselves where there doesn't need to be any. We are not feeling well-equipped, well-prepared. We're not feeling optimistic. We're not feeling confident. Instead, many of us will find that we dip into that victimhood mentality, the woe poor is me kind of narrative that again, we try to stay away from. But with this compounding, not so nice energy kind of building up here in midday, it's going to be hard for us to not find ourselves in a little bit of a negative narrative. However, 3.16 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have a major change in mood, in attitude, in energy, and here is why. First of all, we have the moon in Virgo energy, trining beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in her rulership in Taurus energy. So this is Earth on Earth energy. Now, emotionally speaking, we are reminding ourselves of the change of heart in which we've had. Therefore, the change of worth, the change of values, the change of priorities that we are now trying to rearrange in our heart space, in our head space. Again, focusing in on the smaller details of what we have power and control over in this present moment, in the here and now. 
that could essentially have us aligning with the greater, grander vision, the greater, grander dream. This is like a reminder of why we're going through all of this hardship to be the best version of ourselves. And why is that? Well, because we deserve to be happy. We deserve to be in a state where we can really enjoy ourselves, where we could enjoy the creature comforts, where we can have a little bit of pleasure in our day, where we can feel safe and secure in the run of our environment, where we can feel stable. Okay, so earth energy is stabilizing energy. It is taking a good look at the physical realm. It is understanding who and what needs to stay and who and what needs to kind of go. And we're not ready to kind of make the aspects leave our lives at this particular point. But again, the moon in Virgo focusing in on the smaller details of the change of heart in which we've had is going to lead to some aha moments on where it is that we're essentially prolonging the suffering, prolonging the discomfort, prolonging our discontentment. This is a good interaction. This is a harmonizing interaction. There's a lot of growth. There's a lot of realization. There's a lot of empowerment coming from that heart space. The moon then goes ahead and trines Uranus because Uranus, of course, the great awakener is also in this Taurus energy. This is an aha moment, a download, a light bulb moment, an epiphany that just opens our mind space and our heart space to understanding where it is that we need to pivot. What requires the, I'm going to say, change and transformation the most, the fastest. This is a shift in our mood, in our attitude. This is us opening up to new methods of doing things, new ways of changing our physical realm, new ways of really aligning with the greater, grander vision and pushing ourselves to look forward instead of back. So the last thing that we have going on here little tiny bit of dip in that energy. The last thing we got going on is between Mercury and Saturn. So this is a semi square. So it is a little bit of a tension point, a conflict point, not a major one, but enough where we're going to feel a little bit of a harsh reality check. This is also going to put us in a situation where we aren't really, I'm going to say understanding ourselves that well therefore we're unable to clearly and confidently articulate our thoughts our ideas our feelings at this point so we could be creating a little bit of a miscommunication of sorts this is also when all of these little tiny triggers kind of build up and you know how sometimes you lose your shit at the smallest of things it's like the straw that broke the camel's back this is very much that kind of energy it's almost as if we are being kind of thrown minor inconveniences in order to see how well we're able to actually override them. Again, we're in a testing period. If you've been listening to the Ascension forecast over the last couple of weeks, you would know that this new version of self is getting prepped and primed for us to take this new version of self out into the world and actually test our creator abilities. So all of these triggers, all these activations, the pause energy that we're currently in is testing our energy management skills and having Mercury and Saturn kind of come together, really cluster off our headspace, really cluster off our communication style, really put us in a situation where there's all these little things that on their own don't seem to be a big deal, but you know, you squish them all together and suddenly we are majorly inconvenienced and feeling pressurized. This is a test on our ability to override those triggers and activations and understand why we're being poked at, so to speak, to see how powerful we are in our mental abilities. And so although that doesn't seem fun, this is the name of the game. Our mental power, our mind space is what creates our reality. And if you don't have a strong disposition in your mental plane, then technically speaking, you should not be granted the ability to co-create reality with the collective. We need to make sure that we are well disciplined in our ability to override some negative programming, to see the tests and activations as they are, and to really kind of understand that we are being put in a situation to really show ourselves and the universe the work in which we've done and the level that we're currently at 
in our mental powers. And I know that sounds really, really foo-foo, but this has been a, let's call it mental exam, if you will, to see whether or not we should be gifted with the powers, with the abilities to actually start manifesting out of our mind space. And if you're weak-minded, then you're definitely not going to be creating a very good realm or reality for yourself and for everyone that you're connected with to live in. So again, we're stepping back. We're having this little bit of a reality check. We're having this little bit of a testing period. We're having this little bit of an exam to see where it is that we're at with being able to override the egoic programming and to see the greater, grander picture and perspective from that observer mentality.